welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm your host uh, for today's episode. Joining me in our podcast studios this week is Dr. Sherry Tanumi Harjo. Dr. Sherry is a professor of nutritional sciences at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Sherry, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Why don't you start with a little introduction for the audience? Uh, Thank you for the invitation. So I am a researcher and instructor, and much of my research uses a molecules to man approach, which has included swine in the distant past. Yeah. Sherry, as I understand it, you have um, done a lot of research with inflammation through the years, um, both in swine and in other species. You want to talk a little bit and just kind of set up the, the, the study of inflammation in general. What, what have you worked on throughout the course of your career? So we are mostly interested in the effects of inflammation on measures of vitamin A status. And so this has included mostly human work, but we also work with swine. Very good. A full value relationship starts with understanding your business. And Alanco knows growing the healthiest pig requires focus on every segment of production. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and actionable insights, Alanco is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions that manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. Get full value from start to finish with Elanco. And why vitamin A, Sherry? What makes vitamin A so unique within the inflammation realm? So vitamin A is an essential vitamin. And during the inflammatory process, vitamin A actually decreases in circulation. And so we are mostly interested in vitamin A status assessment. And when one of your biomarkers is being affected by infection and inflammation, it becomes um, paramount that you understand this particular phenomenon. Now, as I understand it, uh, Sherry, vitamins get stored at different places at different times. Is vitamin A one of those uh, vitamins that, you know, the pig consumes and it's immediately available? Or does the pig store some vitamin away in fat stores for a rainy day? How does all that work? Yes. So vitamin A is an interesting vitamin because much of it is actually stored in the liver. And so even though we measure circulating vitamin A, that doesn't get at actual status. So when you want to know vitamin A status, you really, really need to have measures of liver content. And the pig then mobilizes the vitamin A from the liver um, to get it in circulation, I presume, and out to the tissues. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So when we're deficient in terms of the circulating vitamin A, it's not necessarily maybe a nutritional problem. It's a consumption problem. It means that what's out there and available to be utilized is getting gobbled up. Is that right? Yes. And during inflammation, the liver does not release as much vitamin A into circulation. And so that's the key issue with inflammation and vitamin A measures. Very good. So you mentioned the term biomarker, Sherry. You want to talk to us a little bit about what biomarkers are and why vitamin A is a good fit here? So biomarkers are things that we measure that help us to understand vitamin A status. And you can have biomarkers of all sorts of things, like biomarkers of heart disease would be lipid panels. Um, So for vitamin A, biomarkers are what we measure in the serum or indirectly measure in the liver. Inflammation is a pretty general term. Um, When we think about vitamin A, do we think about the vitamin A being utilized in helpful inflammation, inflammation responding to disease challenges, those sorts of things? Or sometimes we think about uh, inflammation as a bad thing, maybe the body over responding. Is vitamin A uh, response to, or vitamin A consumption, a response to inflammation in general, or a more targeted pathway within inflammation, one type of inflammation, so to say? Right. So whenever you have an infection or inflammation, uh, vitamin A is not released from the liver. And also during um, inflammation, if if you have fever, then vitamin A can be excreted in the urine. 
And so there are several different things going on when you have an infection or inflammation in regards to vitamin A. So we call a retinol binding protein, which is the protein that um, hooks to vitamin A in circulation, a negative acute phase protein. If we're going to measure uh, vitamin A, Sherry, you mentioned that, you know, it's truly no status. We need to measure the liver. But um, if I'm trying to figure out if I have an inflammation problem and, and my vitamin A is my biomarker, what type of samples uh, from a pig or I guess any mammal for that matter would I want to would I want to grab? Right. So you can measure inflammation using just blood. So you would prefer, prepare the serum and you could analyze vitamin A, but you could also analyze acute phase proteins. And the most common one that is used in pigs is something called C-reactive protein. And so that is a marker of inflammation also. So if I do the measurements, uh, Sherry, and I find that my vitamin A status is inappropriate, what's what's next? What can I? Are there things I can do about it, or is it just at this point we understand that that there's a problem with inflammation and we got to figure that out? Right. Um, so it has been general practice to over. Uh, treat animals with high doses of vitamin A, but that might not necessarily be needed because during the acute phase protein, the C-reactive protein would go up and vitamin A would go down. And so you're, you're measuring inflammation there. You're not necessarily measuring vitamin A status. Very good. Where do you see the, uh, the research going in the future on uh, vitamin A and its relationship with inflammation? What do you see as the next steps going forward for the research community to help better um, uh, understand what's going on there? So I think it's pretty well known now that when you have infection or inflammation, serum vitamin A decreases. But what we don't know is, are there other measures of vitamin A status that would be affected by inflammation? So these are more sensitive tests of liver sores. And so that's sort of where we're at um, with vitamin A and status assessment. Very good. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Very good. Well, Sherry, I appreciate you coming on and educating our, our listeners on uh, vitamin A and inflammation and what it means for the pig industry. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Thanks for being here on the show. To our audience, thank you for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please check us out at swinehealthblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss out on our next episode. For Dr. Sherry Tenum, Tenumi Harjo and Dr. Clayton Johnson, we wish you a great rest of your week and we'll see you next week. Hey everybody, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.